Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where I help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back to MCAT Bytes. Today, we're diving into a powerful realm of social movements and collective behavior. This is absolutely essential for understanding social dynamics and is crucial for the psych so section on the MCAT. From grassroots campaigns to global protests, we'll explore how groups mobilize to create social change. First, let's go into some definitions you need to know to understand this topic, starting with social movements. These are organized efforts aimed for social change. They're characterized by long-term goals and structural organization. In contrast, collectivist behaviors or collective behaviors refers to the spontaneous unstructured actions of groups. These are often lacking formal organizations. Both phenomena reflect the collective's power to influence social norms and values. Both of these are trying to cause change in some way. It just has to do with how much control there is. Diving into the theories behind social movements, we begin with resource mobilization theory. This theory posits that success of social movements largely depends on the ability to gather necessary resources, which can include money, labor, and the intangible yet crucial aspect of solidarity among members. It emphasizes the rational aspect of movement organization, arguing that having access to resources allows a movement to mobilize effectively, strategize, and sustain its activities over time. This theory challenges earlier notions that social movements purely emerge from social societal discontent, highlighting instead the strategic efforts behind mobilizing resources for social change. Next up, we've got the political process theory. This takes a more dynamic approach, focusing on the interaction between social movements and political contexts in which they operate. It suggests that the success of a social movement is significantly influenced by political opportunities that may arise, such as a change in government, new legislation, or shifts in public policy. These opportunities can empower movements, making it easier for them to gain public support, access political decision makers, and achieve their objectives. This theory also considers the role of political constraints and how movements navigate these challenges to bring about change. Unlike the other theories that focus on material and political aspects, new social movement theory emphasizes the role of identity, culture, and ideology in motivating participants. It suggests that contemporary movements are more concerned with social and cultural change rather than economic issues. These movements often arise from post-industrial society concerns, including environmental protections, human rights, and social equality. They are characterized by decentralized organization and an emphasis on creating meaning and identity for the participants. Each of these theories provides a unique lens through which to view social movements, offering insight into the multifaceted nature of mobilizing for change. Understanding these theories helps to grasp the complexity of how movements emerge, sustain themselves, and ultimately how they can enact social change. For the MCAT, recognizing the diversity of these theories aids in understanding the broader sociological processes at play in social movements and collective behaviors. Now that we know some of the underlying theories behind social movements, let's get into the vocab of social movements you need, need, need to know for the MCAT. Social movements evolve through stages, as everything seems to on the MCAT. We've got PJ stages, and we've also got social movement stages. The first one is emergence. During this stage, for an example of the stages of social movements, consider the civil rights movement in the United States. Social movements evolve through stages, emergence as they form, coalescence as they gain public visibility, bureaucratization as they establish structure, and decline when they achieve their goals, fail, or become institutionalized. Each stage is crucial for understanding a movement's life cycle. For an example to better contextualize this, let's consider the social rights movement in the United States. During the emergence stage, the civil rights movement began to form in response to widespread segregation and discrimination against African Americans. This movement was initially fragmented with various local groups advocating for civil rights and equality. Then it began to coalesce. This stage saw the movement gain momentum, with significant events such as the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, where Martin Luther King Jr. MLK delivered his iconic I Have a Dream speech. The movement began to coalesce around a shared set of goals, including ending segregation and ensuring voting rights. As the movement grew, it became more organized and structured. Organizations like the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SCLC, and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, played key roles in strategizing and planning protests, sit-ins, and freedom rides. Notice, once the acronyms start coming in, that's when we are undergoing bureaucratization most of the time. This stage involves the formation of the movement's activities and the establishment of clear leadership roles. The decline of the civil rights movement can be seen in the late 1960s and early 1970s, as major legislative victories were achieved, including the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. 
While these successes marked significant progress towards the movement goals, they also led to a decrease in mobilization and the fragmentation of the movement into various factions, focusing on different issues. Now that we understand social movements, let's move into collective behavior. Collective behavior manifests in varied forms, from benign fads to panic and riots. These behaviors highlight the spontaneous side of group actions, driven by a common impulse or reactions to situation, demonstrating the unpredictability and variety of collective responses. Understanding social movements and collective behavior offers a lens through which to view the forces that shape our society. Understanding these dynamics is not just crucial for the MCAT, but for grasping the broader social pressures that influence change. Thank you so much for watching our video on social movements, and I will see you next time.